Hi folks, you're with Tacitus today, your pushback channel, and thank you for joining this presentation. I'd like to start a series of, of presentations or videos, essays, looking at history changing generals uh, throughout, uh, well, throughout history, um, where uh, they could be military theorists uh, that, that changed the very concept and, and practice of warfare, or they could be great battlefield generals or both. But by virtue of their existence and the things they did, the battles they won, the theories they applied, they changed the very course of history. And uh, without them being there at this time, um, history would have taken a completely different course. So these are, are towering figures, if you like, throughout history. And I'm going to start with um, the general from ancient Thebes uh, in ancient Greece um, at around 380 BC. And uh, Thebes was a, a city to the northwest of Athens in central Greece in a, a province known as Boeotia. And uh, uh, Epaminondas was from a, a upper class Theban uh, family, and uh, he was he introduced a new concept of military theory, battlefield practice that completely changed the course of history in Greece. So, let's have a look at Epaminondas. Now, Epaminondas uh, had noticed that that um, the battle, uh, the, the phalanx, if you like, was the the Greek phalanx. You know, dudes holding spears out in front of them, walking forward and and stabbing the other phalanx coming towards them, um, that uh, the phalanx, uh, had, which had been around for many hundreds of years, was could be, um, if you like, circumvented the effect of it. Because the Spartans had really uh, been in control of Greece for hundreds of years, or certainly from a land battle military perspective, and they had a, um, a professional warrior class, and... Uh, they would typically always win in the phalanx. Now, the phalanx was, was typically, um, you know, say 20, 30 shields across and 8 to 15, usually 8 to 12 shields deep. And you'd have three or four formations of these guys uh, moving forward and, again, you know, stabbing each other. Now, Epaminon just looked at that and thought, this can be done differently. Um, no one can really match the Spartans in them having a, a professional warrior class. So we're looking at part-time farmers, um, maybe a small group of professionals in, in the Greek city-states, but you're looking at farmers and artisans and craftsmen. They're having to do their day jobs and, and then uh, you know, put on some armour and go and fight battles. Now, the professional warrior class is always going to have an advantage there, which the Spartans did. So Epaminondas uh, put together a new battlefield program, which, which was absolutely revolutionary. Now, bear in mind that the, the same practices have been going on for hundreds of years. So the idea that someone coming up with another way of doing it was in self, itself quite revolutionary. But Epaminondas uh, uh, formed the, uh, and there's a graphic coming up here, what was called an echelon formation. So 45 degrees going left to right. So he put um, close to 50 shields deep on the Theban left wing, um, so they're advancing forward at 50 shields deep. Now, it doesn't matter that they're going to hit a, a bunch of professional soldiers. When you're 50 shields deep, you're going to push the other guys off the mark. If you can push them off the mark, then they have to turn around and run, and the, the, the backs of the soldiers are not armoured, so they can um, uh, create a rout of the enemy pretty easily here. So they've got 50 shields deep. And then going back... Um, in echelon, again, 45 degree formation, going back um, uh, uh, to the beginning of where the, um, or the end, if you like, the tail end of where the 50 shields deep is another group of maybe six shields deep. And then the next the next echelon is maybe three shields deep. So as the, the whole 45 degree echelon formation advances, it's knocked the first um, opposing uh, phalanx off the mark before the other two have even got there or made contact. Then the, the, the 50 shield deep formation routes the opposing formation, then comes round the back of the second formation, just as the um, just as the next echelon of the Theban front is 
um, makes contact. So this was this was quite revolutionary. Um, the Spartans had been had been suffered a small time tactical defeat a couple of years previously. So this had encouraged Epaminondas and, and his his primary colleague Pelopidas to to think, well, we, we can beat these guys, particularly in the area of where the Theban cavalry was quite good. Uh, and so they could um, chase off the cavalry, then come in behind the, the Spartans um, formation. So that, that was already something that was in their minds, playing around, what, what can we do with the cavalry and so on. So this, but this echelon formation was the first full-scale pitched battle defeat of a, of a, a full Spartan army. It, it, it hadn't happened for many hundreds of years, something in the order of 400 odd years, it hadn't happened. Um, so this was a huge revolution, huge shake-up in um, uh, not only battlefield tactics and military theory, but in the political repercussions of this. The Spartans backed up for another battle um, and, and were defeated along similar lines. They didn't adapt or, or change, or they thought the same same formation would work. Now, the Spartans didn't have a lot of professional soldiers, you know, a couple of thousand or so. So they, they suffered um, somewhere in the region of 700 to 800 casualties uh, at um, the Battle of Leuctra in 371 BC, where, where Epaminondas supplied this echelon uh, formation in the phalanxes. And he... That was a big loss for the Spartans. That, that's over a third of their professional warrior class is gone just in one battle. And then they suffered again heavy casualties in a subsequent battle. So really their their ability to intimidate and dominate the rest of Greece or even the Peloponnese for that matter was <coughs> was, was um, substantially affected. So, so here we go. Um, now, why is Epaminondas... Um, relevant in, in history today. Uh, the effect of that victory at Leuctra and then subsequent victories at 371 BC um, was not only that it changed how the phalanx would operate on the battlefield and gave, it gave rise to a whole new concept of the, of the mobile, the flexible phalanx. And that started to, um, to be something that, and, and you know, combined arms use of cavalry, which hadn't played as big a role previously. Um, so, uh, in a professional cavalry class, if you like. Now, this this changed Greek politics because not only did it break uh, Spartan power, the Theban the Theban concept of um, power was to to form cooperative leagues that they they didn't really want to have the cost. Of, of dominating, um, you know, the, their neighbours or other cities, they'd rather have a, some sort of a confederation, and so they didn't attempt to control Greece in the way that the Spartans had or dominate a particular area. And this was this was important because it gave rise to to other other um, regions of Greece practicing their own theories in in um, uh, you know, military theory and and the practice training of troops and so on. Now, one of the the students of um, of uh, Epaminon, or Epaminondas, or particularly Pelopidas, one of the students was this, this um, nearby province of Macedon, and there was a young a young prince there called Philip, and uh, and he became a real uh, became a very avid student of Theban military theory and, and practice and the development of theory and how you can transcend the restriction of previous learning by applying um, new theories and adapting to situations and circumstances. This was something that really Epaminondas and Pelopidas were really um, ahead of the curve on that. They were the new idea of you, you can adapt the circumstance, you can adapt your tactics um, to overcome the enemy and, and defeat the enemy. And this was actually a new concept in Greece. You wouldn't think so, but it was. Um, so Philip of Macedon um, then uh, very successfully used uh, this. He, he became a great general in his own right and becoming very dominant, uh, certainly in the northern half of Greece, but really all of Greece and Macedon became the, the controlling influence there. And, and of course, Philip had a, had a son called Alexander and Alexander the Great, as we know, is a, uh, of course, a, a towering figure in his own right. So Epaminondas 
was the beginning of the cycle of history that went through with um, Alexander the Great and then the effect that Alexander the Great had and indeed his generals on the politics and the structure and the the um, areas of the of the Middle East all over the Middle and Greece too um, all over that eastern Mediterranean so that whole process began now you could argue that without Epaminondas it could never have occurred or someone who would do that but he was the one again along with Pelopidas um, he was the one who who put that together this new concept of warfare breaking many hundreds of years of tradition and that and changed the history of the ancient world um, forever and so I would argue that Epaminondas was the beginning of the historical cycle that culminated in Alexander the Great and the effect he had on history. You've been with TASSUS today, your pushback channel. Thank you for listening.